Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to do something really cool. I'm going to show you something that's a little bit fun and interesting. So instead of doing the usual processes that you do in data science, I'm going to show you how we can use this code in R to create a strong password generator. So we're going to create passwords like these down here. Let me go and put this highlighter on here so you can see it a little bit better. So we're going to create passwords like these over here. I'm going to show you how to make a reusable function that's going to get you passwords that are going to have lowercase, uppercase symbols um, and numbers in them. And you can pick the length of them and the number of them that you want. So we're going to create a function. Then we're going to do a for loop to get the number of items that you want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so you have one little input area to get that. So let's start up here. First, what we're going to do is we're going to create the function called password. Right? There's no libraries I'm calling in because this stuff's all native to R. Okay, So this is all in R that we're going to do this. There's nothing else we're doing here. So we're going to create this function called password. and It's through the function and we're going to pass into it in this function call of uh, length, one variable. Right? And that's the length of the password we want to want to be eight characters, seven characters, 16 characters along. What do we want? Right Now you're going to have two uh, parts called symbols. Symbols A and symbols B. These are both lists. And so what I've done is I've divvied it up into two parts. So you have the common symbols and the less common symbols. Things that, you know, when they say, you know, your password cannot have certain items, I want to have this symbols B part so you can put them in here. Now I just put random stuff in there. I put, you know, period, comma, colon, semicolon, equal sign. Things that might uh, be interpreted by a login as something they don't want or a SQL injection, so they don't want that. So that's why I've got symbols B here, the less common symbols. Symbols A is you know, your normal stuff, number, sign, exclamation mark, um, plus, minus, things like that. You can move some of them here if you want. But I've got symbols A and symbols B. Then uh, we've got numbers 10. So numbers 10 is, the reason why it's called 10 is there's 10 digits in there. It's 0 through 9. It's a list of 0 through 9. It's an array right there. So that's what I've created here. And then what I've got is, same thing, C, we've got letters, letters, symbols A, symbols B, and numbers 10. Let me explain this to you. Letters, lowercase, is all 26 letters of the alphabet in lowercase. Letters, uppercase, like this, is all the 26 letters of the alphabet uppercase, as R gives you automatically. So you know that by putting these in here, I'm putting an array of, what, 26 letters and 26 letters, and then all the symbols in here in A and B, and then the numbers of 10, right? So now, what I want to do is I want to get the probability. So this is all still within this function call, okay? I want probability. So I'm going to create another list now of the, what, I want the probabilities. So the probabilities are going to be REP of the percentage, right? Which in this case, the first one, I want 50% for lowercase letters. And then I want 20% for uppercase letters. Then I want 10% for the um, symbols, which is all of symbols A and symbols B. I grouped them all together. I could have split it out and had another REP and a different percentage here if I wanted to, and then I would have to count the numbers in the first group, count the numbers in the second group, but I don't need to do that. Uh, I have them all in this one. There's 30 of them. Then I have this, which is uh, the sim or the uh, numbers of 10, right, 0 through 9 at 20%. So basically what I want here, if you think about this, is I want 50%, I want the highest incidence of lowercase letters. Then I want an equal of between uppercase letters and numbers, right? Then the least percentage I want is the symbols, right? Because usually you just want one, maybe two, or no symbols. So that's why it's the least. Then what I do is I use paste zero of the sample of these, of password characters, right? Length, true. Now password characters is this right here, right? Of this. So it's going to bring those in and the probability of them. So it's going to tell, so it's going to go through each character based on the probability of these. Collapse equals blank. Okay, so now when I do that, that puts that into P word and then it's going to return that P word. See that right there? It returns that out of there and that's my password. Now it gives you one password, right? So if I run this through, it'll put it right here as a function of length, right? Now when I run that through, it only will give me one password if it prints it, but it's not going to do it right now. This is a function, right? So I actually have to run through by calling password, right? 
So let's go down here, and I'm going to get that in a minute. But let's go here and look at this. I've got two pieces right here. This is my only inputs. That's what I wanted. It's two inputs. Password length is eight, and number of five. See how that works? So I can change the password length and number right here at any time I want, okay, by using this. And this will be carried up into this in a second here, though. Now I'm also going to create a list based on this number right here. Okay, so it's important that I use number and not the number five. The reason being is if I change this five to a four, it'll automatically change it here. So I want a list vector of size five. Why? Because I'm going to put each of these instances of running that through into this vector x, y. And I'll show you that in a second here. So next, this is where my for loop is, right? So I can get more than one item. So the, the more than one password. So I've got number of five, right? So I want to run this through five times. But I don't want to change the number variable. So see, in here I've got counter. This is the equivalent in uh, Visual Basic of counter equals counter minus one, right? So the thing is, is if I put number in here, it's going to affect this, you know, it's global versus local variables. So I don't want to do that. So I've got number put into counter. See that right here? And then counter is brought in here, and I subtract counter, but I don't change number. So number will stay at 5. So if you look at this, I've got 4 number in 1 to number, right? 1 to 5, right? For 5 cases in 1 to 5, I want to do password DF, and I'm going to put into that the password length. See it? And I'm calling password right there. That's our variable, or our, our function. So I've got password length, which is 8. It's going to get pushed in there, and it's going to give me the password DF, right? That's what comes out right here is the password. It's going to go right there and go into here into password DF. Then what I do is I take the password DF, and I put it into the variable, or the uh, vector we created above that list, and it's going to put it in there as one instance. And then it's going to subtract one from the counter, and it'll go back through the loop again. It's also going to print it out so I just can see it as it's running. So all I have to do, realistically, is just run this, right? And you see right there, there's my five new variables, or not variables, uh, passwords, that it's created, right? See how it created all those? It called that function call I created up above. And here's the new five passwords. And if you look over here, look, this did not change. See how number did not change? It's still five. If I put number minus one in here to number, that would be wrong and it would change that to four or three or something like that. We don't want that to happen. Now, once I have that and I've got that figured out, this is what? It is not, it's a list. It is not a data frame. It's not easy to work with. It's not easy to do stuff with. So what I want to do instead is I'm going to put it into a data frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this right here. And what this is, is data.frame of a matrix unlisting XY, see that, which is this XY list right here, we're going to unlist it, by row equals T, strings as factors equals false. When you do that, okay, it goes into DF1, and then what we do, it's still, it's, so it's going to be a data frame, but it's going to have ugly names for the columns. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of that, and I want to change to passwords for the column names. See that? So let's show you this. So if I do this, okay, and if I were to just take DF1, see how it's got that matrix on list, blah, 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 is the column in this ugly, you don't want to use that. So what I've done here is using call names, I'm changing that, just this part right here, to passwords, right? So if I do that, and then that's why I have DF1 right here. All you got to do is this, and look at that. There it is. It's now called passwords. It's a data frame. It's gonna and it's got passwords one through five. I could run it back through again and do it, you know, for four, for eight, for whatever number I wanted them. I just created five off of that, but I can do anything and for any length I want. It'll work for any length and any number of them. Then on top of that, at the bottom, this up a little bit here. I have this. This is write.table, my data, right? And I can write that to anywhere I want as a text file, okay? And that will actually put this in a text file for me. Sep equals, you know, T, a tab. So that's what it is. It's separated by tab in there, um, or tab separated, comma. 
or tab separated uh, text file. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so that's how you do that. So I just showed you here a bunch of things. We created a function that does numerous things. It finds a way to get us a very secure password that does not use names or anything memorable in it. It uses 50% or probabilities of 50%, 20%, and so on to get the right combination of lower and uppercase letters and symbols and numbers. And then we bring that back out of there. So regardless of the link I put in there, it comes back out and gives me one password. But down below here, we have a for loop, which what it will do is it gives me as many times as I want for my numbers. So if I want five passwords, it gives me five. If I want one, it gives me one. So that's how that works. And then we, I've shown you how to create the vector to pull that data from the for list or the for loop in here. So it doesn't get lost and it gives you just one. Um, it gives you all five of them. Okay. And then you see how to create it into a data frame so you can use it, print it out, whatever you want to do with it, uh, send it to an Excel file. Down below, I just showed you how to do it with a uh, sending it to a text file. So I hope you found this interesting and fun. Uh, data science doesn't have to be boring. So we do some cool stuff. Right here, you just learned how to create some pretty uh, uh, good uh, passwords and um, how to do it quickly in R. And it, this was educational in that you learned for, how to use a for loop to do it. You saw how I did it with a function call in there. A com more, com I would say consider that a complex function call because of what's involved in it. And uh, it's pretty cool and interesting. So I hope you found or you have found this interesting and fun. Please take a moment if you haven't already to subscribe, like, and share. Please leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Make sure you subscribe and you click that bell so that you'll know uh, every time I I publish something wonderful like this for you to work with, play with, learn from. Thanks again and have a great day. And remember, data science can and is fun.